What's up YouTube, Fred here. Uh, welcome to another Sunday Drive. Uh, if you're not familiar with my channel, I'm Fred. Uh, I do different car and motorcycle stuff and on to today's video. So today I'm going to be doing a route from Portsmouth, New Hampshire down through Route 1A and Route 1B uh, along the coast down to uh, Hampton, New Hampshire. Um, it's going to be an awesome drive. Uh, it is such a nice day. It's like 77, 78 degrees. Uh, it's just at the end of summer and the weather is perfect. So let's get to it. Portsmouth is great. It's got all sorts of little shops and uh, restaurants and is easily walkable. It's a great spot to be in the summer and we're right on the water's edge so it's fantastic. Now interestingly to get through the town you actually to get to where I want to go you actually have to go right through the center of town unless you want to do a very wide loop kind of out and around. But it's a nice little town. It's not too crowded on a Saturday morning early. hear people read the license plate not fast out loud. I like it. I didn't want anything too serious. What a beautiful day. So I, by the time you're watching this, uh, it'll be probably like a month and a half after I've actually filmed it. Um, I've been doing really good trying to pre-upload videos. Um, so that it's a little bit easier for me to not have the stress of every week film, edit, upload. Um, so this vi this video will probably go live, I don't know, quite a ways from now. And so it's actually been a little while since I've just done a fun cruise in a scenic spot. So that was sort of my inspiration this morning. And I mean, what better place than this to just get out? You're right on the water. It's a beautiful day. It's not crowded. I mean... This is the kind of weather that's just the best to drive around in and go for a cruise. So we're going out onto a couple islands here that are right, right in the bay of Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, there's a main waterway on the left where there's some naval yards, some coast guard uh, docks, and there's a lot of like in and out boat traffic. Um, there's a bunch of cargo ships and oil ships that come in. My wife and I go kayaking on this next island, it's called Gravel Island, and there's about like 10 parking spaces in this kind of dirt driveway. And uh, we go kayaking there a couple times a year generally. Um, this year has been a little different, I don't think we've gotten there since spring. Um, but I mean it's a fantastic spot. The great part is it's very protected, there's islands all around, and so the bay that we kayak in actually is... Uh, it's very calm water. You can see right to the bottom, but you still get like there's lobster boats going through, and there's people fishing, and there's stand-up paddle boarders, and so it's there's always like something going on, and uh, it's awesome, awesome, awesome. And the neat thing too is that the tides are so dramatic; they're like five or six foot high tides uh, from high tide to low tide. That difference, and so if you go at high tide, like there's not a lot of land sticking out, but it, if you go at low tide, there's like huge islands that kind of uncover themselves from the tide. So. That's pretty cool. Look at this. Oh, this is awesome. So just up here on the right, you'll see this is where we would park to go kayaking. Um, not much parking. You can see there's a couple stand-up paddle boarders out there. Um, there's actually a paddle board yoga class going on right now. I don't know if that camera will catch that. Oh yeah, there's a couple spots. 
So even now it's like 11.30 in the morning, uh, fantastic spot to go, there's room for a couple more cars, and uh, just a great body of water to get out on a kayak or paddleboard and, uh, and enjoy. The water's a little chilly, so keep that in mind too. Always gotta blip the gas when there's kids around. They tend to like that. <laughs> or at least I did when I was a kid, I don't know. Not loud though, this is a quiet neighborhood, so that was just a little, little like, little, little poke. Oh, what a beautiful day. 76 degrees and you get that ocean air. The, the video, you can't smell it, so I'll, I'll try to describe it. It's, it's this fresh, it smells like the ocean, but it's not like that seaweed funk you sometimes get at low tide. It's this refreshing, light smelling air. Um, it, it's kind of indescribable. It's fantastic. And uh, you get that real heavily here because I'm surrounded by water on all sides. I'm looking at my, my GPS here and I'm, I'm literally on an island for the next couple miles and it's awesome. I mean, it's so, so much fun to be out here. So now we're headed over, on, we're on uh, Route 1B, which kind of, we've come off the island and then we're headed back over to the coast. You go inland a little bit and there's a little connecting road. I believe it's actually Route 1. Um, but we're on 1B now and we're headed back over to the shore and uh, that's where we go in and out. There's all the beaches and harbors and stuff. And uh, just, I mean, this is, this is the best part of New England as far as I'm concerned. Uh, just as far as being near the ocean and getting the fresh air and the views are fantastic and it's just this like low-key awesome place. Oh, that V8 <laughs> where you can just lug along in the gear and then just roll on. Oh. Man, even, even rolling on where you're not flooring it and you're just going a moderate speed, that surge of torque, it gets you right in the chest. It just like pushes you back in the seat and it gets your, your stomach a little like, woo! Uh, like, like if you're riding a roller coaster. And uh, man, this car is, is so much fun to drive. So there's a little state park we just drove by called Odeorn State Park and they've got picnic tables, a playground. They've actually got a little science center and you can go and take some classes about marine biology. Um, it's a great spot for kids and they've got these tidal flats that at low tide it's lots of exposed rock and seaweed and they take kids out there and teach them about all the different seaweed and crabs and clams and all the little critters that live in the water and uh, it's just such an amazing thing. Um, really really cool and you can add this little like educational science component to a fun day going along the shore or going to a beach. I don't know if you can see it here up on the left, but there's a hurricane foghorn. <laughs> I think that's what it's called. Uh, it's a horn that plays like if a hurricane's coming or if there's some sort of emergency and it's got that air raid siren type sound to it. Um, I'll see if I can find a clip to play so you can hear what that is. Um, but all along the coast here, if there's a real severe storm uh, planned or coming in, uh, and the seas aren't safe, or it's not safe to be on the shore, uh, they will blast those at periodic intervals to keep people aware and alert. Um, interesting, but also like a little alarming, like, hey, there's this alarm that if it goes off, get away from the water as quick as you can. It's not like the tsunami warnings uh, on the west coast, where every town you go into, there's a sign that says, like, if there's a tsunami, you must be higher elevation than this sign. Uh, that was something that caught us a little off guard when we visited uh, the West Coast uh, two years ago. But still, I mean, I mean, I guess you could have a tsunami, but more likely it's, it's hurricane and storm surge. Um, the water does come over the road here sometimes, so uh, you gotta be aware of that if you buy coastal property. <laughs> They've closed off all the parking. You can see all these orange barrels here, so I can't actually pull off to get a better view or to stop and take pictures, but hopefully you can see some of it. And uh, the beaches are not nearly as crowded as they used to be. Seems like everybody's doing pretty good social distancing, which is nice. I like those BMWs. 
like a three series with all-wheel drive, manual transmission, you know, like an inline six with a turbo. Oh, those are nice cars. I think one of the biggest challenges of being a car enthusiast, not being focused on a single brand, is that there are so many cars that I really, really like, and the amount of times in a week, a single week, that I go through and I'm thinking about, oh man, I would love a BMW, or oh cool, that Audi is really cool, or oh man, those old like Cobra replicas, and the number of cars I go through in a week in my head, I'd say probably 10 cars every single week where I'm like mulling over, you know, I wouldn't say seriously, but at least like, huh, logistically, could I own that? What would I do with it if I had it? Where would I store it? Um, and it's sort of, it, it's a gift and a curse. It's, it's fun because I love playing those mental, you know, gymnastics of trying to figure out, you know, is that a car I would actually enjoy or is the envisionment a little bit better than the reality? Um, like if you bought a Countach or a, a uh, DeLorean or something. Um, but on the other hand, it's like there are a bunch of cars where I'm pretty sure I would absolutely love to own them. And I wouldn't want to get rid of what I have. I would certainly want more, but I don't have anywhere to put them. They cost a lot of money. And so uh, that's the curse side of it is that uh, you're very excited about all these things, but you don't necessarily get a chance to leverage them. Look at this house right on the, the kind of the peninsula here. What a spot. Water's nice and calm today too, great for boating. So thanks for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, hopefully it was a great little burst of summer uh, to hold you over if it's fall or winter or whenever you're watching this. And until next time, Fred out.